Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend, and welcome to the Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. It's called our Tract and Truth Tuesday. If you've been listening a while, you know we give that same title to every one of our Tuesday broadcasts. We call it our Tract and Truth Tuesday. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. We're talking about gospel tracts. I'm going to explain what one of those is here in a moment and talk about one. And I frankly want to put some gospel gospel tracks into your hand. But we call the program Tract and Truth. We talk about tracks and we talk about the truth of the gospel. So with that in mind, if it's possible, get your Bible as I'm going to be reading a couple of verses out of Luke 22. The Gospel of Luke chapter 22. We're finishing up our study in the book of Leviticus this week. My plan is to very quickly move into 2 Peter. And that's in part why I'm coming here to read this little snippet portion out of Luke 22 of an exchange between Jesus and Peter right before Peter's denial of the Lord Jesus Christ. So get your Bible open, get something on which you can jot some notes, would you please? And let's be Let's be partners today and growing in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, most of you who listen regularly know that I, a few months ago, was preaching in the country of Cuba, and the believers there, frankly, are a great blessing to me personally, and the church leaders there are really active and aggressively serving Christ. I have a great admiration for the Cuban church. It is strong, and two of the reasons for the strength of the church there in Cuba is that they, number one, deliberately teach doctrine to the believers. They do that by determined plan. And then a second reason the church is strong is that the church deliberately disciples their new converts. Now, with that being said, then there's two questions you and I here in the United States need to be challenging ourselves with as we meet together as believers in our local churches. Question number one is, have you and I ever personally led another person to Christ? That could be your child or grandchild, a co-worker, a neighbor, anybody. Have you been used by God to be the agent in seeing somebody receive Jesus? The second question we need to challenge each other with is this. Are you and I in the past, or have we in the past, or are we right now helping a young believer to become strong in Christ. Now, today I want to talk about how to help a new believer. I want to share one way. There's other ways, but one way that I use in helping a new believer take their first steps in their walk with Christ. I believe, frankly, if we deliberately work at helping new converts in their very first month in their salvation life, that we can see far stronger churches and far stronger saints three and five years down the line. That's our goal today. So get your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes. I mentioned a gospel tract a moment ago. I spelled the word. A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. A gospel tract is an evangelism tool helping us give the gospel to people with whom we cannot have the time to sit down and have a one-on-one conversation. The particular gospel tract in my hand right now is entitled Writing the Religious Merry-Go-Round. Writing the Religious Merry-Go-Round. It begins by saying that merry-go-rounds are fun. And friend, they are. Now that I'm getting older, the slower pace rides are far more enjoyable. But merry-go-rounds don't go anywhere. And this gospel track uses the picture of a merry-go-round to find out and explain to people how that being involved in things like good works, religion, and being sincere can just 
just be a merry-go-round that leads you nowhere except to hell because those things, as good as they are, can be a substitute in the mind and heart of so many people for the real born-again experience. This track begins with being on a merry-go-round going nowhere to laying out the gospel in very clear fashion and challenging the reader to receive Christ as Savior, riding the religious merry-go-round. Would you let me send it to you, please? At the end of the program, my announcer will be giving you three ways by which you can contact us. If your pen and paper are ready, choose one of the ways, jot it down, give us your name, give us your mailing address. I'll send you free of charge a sample packet containing one each of all all of our English gospel tracks, this one, Riding a Religious Merry-Go-Round, will be in there. You can just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, if your Bible's open to Luke chapter 22, verses that may be familiar to you, verses 31 and 32 say this, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, that means turned back from his uh, denying Christ, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. That's that phrase, strengthen thy brethren, that really is where our focus is here today. Before I talk about how to strengthen young believers, let me read you a letter I got just the end of last week from a prisoner named Michael. It says this, Dear Bible Tracks, I am pleased to have received your correspondence. I also have completed your Bible study. You will find it here with my letter. I pray for your continued fellowship and your work. My prayer is that your work will grow. I practice my Bible verses and studies daily. I am borrowing a study Bible to help me. I know the Holy Spirit guides me in my studies and that I will be successful in my walk with Jesus. Because of my joy in Christ, some other detainees want to begin a fellowship in the name of Jesus Christ. I can't say that I have as much knowledge in God's Word as others, but I share your materials with them, and I try to answer their questions. Thank you, in Christ, Michael. Here is a person that came to Christ through one of our gospel tracts, a prisoner, he now, as a young believer, we did some follow-up with him, and now even in his spiritual childhood, he's helping to help other prisoners grow in knowing Christ as Savior. I love that letter. Now, Michael came to Christ, as I said, after reading one of our tracts. When he contacted us and told us of his salvation decision, we immediately sent him two things. Number one, a Bible study containing four key lessons, and then number two, we sent him a card so that he can contact a different ministry and that specializes in helping people grow in the Lord through Bible correspondence courses. And that ministry is the source of light ministry. We have a great, great admiration for them, more than I can say. Now, I say all that to get to this point. What four things do I want a new believer to really learn and become firmly grounded in in the first month of their salvation life? There are four basic truths. Jot them down, would you please? Number one is this. What were they before they received Christ. What were they before they received Christ? The first thing we do is talk about their past. When we send a new believer this study, like I sent to Michael, what they do is look up a series of Bible verses and fill in some blanks, some answers, one or two word answers. And these answers come directly from the Bible verses that they look up. For instance, one verse they look up is Ephesians chapter two and verse one. And the blank they fill in is this. God says, I was blank in trespasses and sin. Well, when the New convert looks at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, and you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So they fill in the word dead. Now, the answer is simple. The answer is clear. And by doing these studies, the new convert quickly sees that they themselves can read the Bible and learn important truths all on their own. We all need Bible teachers, but we need to be letting the Spirit of God use the Word of God and Him be the teacher in our soul. So, 
Truth number one is we tell them and help them get grounded in what were they before they received Christ. Second truth is this, what am I now? What am I now? We need to know what we are because of being saved through the shed blood of Christ. That's a critical thing. In this segment of the study, they learn that they are a son of God, they're a child of God, they're a babe in Christ, they're a new creature in Christ, and other things. We want them to know, who are you now? Yes, I used to be that, but now this is who I am according to the very word of God. The third truth is this question. What has happened to me? What has happened to me? How in the world did I go to be from being dead in sin to be a child of God? Well, the point of the third lesson is to clarify for the new believer just how it was that they received Christ. Now, we're doing that for two significant reasons. Significant reason number one is that we want the new believer to see what they did is exactly what the Bible says they need to do or anybody else need to do to be saved from their sin. We want them to see from the Word of God that what they did is God's answer. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. It's faith in Christ alone that saves a person. But the second significant reason we want them to really look at what happened to them is we want this new believer to be better able to tell somebody else what they, this other person, need to do that they can be saved. We're really preparing this month-old babe in Christ to become a gospel teller. Well, the fourth truth we want a new convert to have fixed in their soul is this. What about eternal security? What about eternal security? Now, I know that not everybody listening to the broadcast believes the same as I do. I believe that when a person is genuinely born again, they cannot lose their salvation. Some godly, historic, Bible-believing denominations would not agree with me. That's their privilege. I happen to believe the Bible teaches that a person is saved and held by God forever. We want new converts to have a firm grip on the fact that they are saved forever. God has given to them everlasting life. In almost every Bible preaching church you'll go into, you're going to find three groups. Number one, lost people who regularly attend, and we need to give the gospel to them regularly. A second group is those that are weak as believers and doubting believers. We need to strengthen them. But lastly, you're going to find some really strong, mature saints. Now, once you figured out which category you're in, then you need to either, number one, find out how do I move from my present category into a better category, or if you're a mature, strong believer, how can you be used to bring young, weak, uh, doubting believers to become strong in the Lord? Peter denied the Lord, but Jesus said, I prayed for you, strengthen the brethren. Beloved, we need to be strengthening each other. Even mature saints need to be strengthened every now and again or two. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.